Hello, 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 everybody. It's your boy, Jmalls of Jmalls Gaming, here today to talk about negativity in the Final Fantasy XIV scene. And is it just me, or has the community overall been way more negative lately? I don't know what it is about 6.2, but it just feels like it's been coming to a head. Like, it's been growing and almost festering in the community ever since a little bit after Endwalker launched. And I'm not entirely sure why, since I thought Endwalker was very good. Like, I understand, like, from 6.0 to really 6.2's launch, there was very little actual endgame content related to Endwalker. Like, there was some, but compared to what we had in Shadowbringers, not as much. And as compared to what we had in Stormblood, not as much. But, with 6.2, for some reason, all this negativity has been really coming to a head. And it's weird, because I thought the patch overall was really good. Like, overall, the patch was really solid. And I feel that a lot of this negativity, a lot of this criticism, is almost being boiled over in regards to the balance concerns. Because this has been the, the source of a lot of the critique that I've seen. Now, I do want to make a differentiation here between... Critique and just negativity. Critique to me has some kind of valuable information underlying within it. A lot of people mistake this, and I see this a lot in not just the Final Fantasy XIV scene, but a lot of other gaming scenes as well, where a lot of people mistake critique's purpose. And they believe that if the game is not going to change, then the critique is, doesn't have any point to it. That is under the assumption that critique is for the sole reason of being distributed to the developers or the publishers. I disagree fundamentally with that. Because to me, critique is not just for the developers and publishers, it's also for the consumer. And I would almost argue that the consumer is the more important audience, in my opinion. We'll talk about that, though. But there's a difference between critique and offering valid criticisms versus just negativity for the sake of being negative or positivity for the sake of being positive. I do not believe that hyperbole or exaggeration invalidates an underlying critique. Like, say you have someone who understands balance in the game and understands how to or what can lead to unbalance in the jobs. If they use a lot of hyperbole or exaggeration, that doesn't invalidate the underlying concern that they have or the underlying critique that that person has. It doesn't. Because of the way they want to dress that critique up, or the way they want to spice it up, that doesn't mean that they're wrong. For instance, let's take what a job that I've seen a lot of people talk about, which is Machinist. Because it does lower damage, and doesn't have a lot of overall utility. If they want to dress that up to make that more palatable to the consumer, or make that more palatable en masse, that's fine in my opinion, so long as they aren't being dishonest about the critique of the class. But if someone's just being negative for the sake of being negative and saying Machinist is a terrible class, terrible design, it's just terrible all around, and despite iteration on that class, they're consistent with their negativity, then I don't feel that has value. But if you're saying, hey, look, we have a class here, or a job, as it's called in Final Fantasy XIV, we have a job here with Machinist that has significant systemic issues with it in terms of its damage output and its overall contribution to the party. That's a valid critique. And if they want to dress that up as saying, Machinist is the worst DPS in the game because it does barely any damage and it contributes almost nothing to the overall party, there's more bias there, there's more personalization behind that critique, but the underlying critique should not just be dismissed. And I feel like a lot of the times we overall ignore a lot of valid criticism that is veiled or wrapped up in this personalization. Because like I said before, hyperbole and exaggeration does not invalidate the underlying critique. It doesn't. And that critique, that may be dressed up or spiced up, is different than just being pessimistic for the sake of being pessimistic. That's two different things in my opinion. Now, I do feel that the scene at large could benefit from having more people being okay with critique, being okay with people expressing concerns about the overall game state. I also feel that people should learn the difference between just being pessimistic about something than using pessimism as a method to distribute critique. They're two different things, people. Critique 
has biases. Every person alive, every person that plays a game, every person that speaks about a game, and that speaks about Final Fantasy XIV, has inherent biases. Biases aren't necessarily a bad thing, because you can glean information from those biases. Say you have person A and person B. Person A is making a critique of the game. And actually, they're making a specific critique about a class, about an overall job and how it plays. Now, person B is consuming that critique. They are watching or listening to that person talk. Now, imagine that person A says, I think this class is bad. I think it's just, oh, it's unredeemable. There's nothing good about it. It's just, a, it's just badly designed. Does that actually have any information to it? Well, it does to a degree, but it requires context. Similar to a kind of a review scope, I can save that for another video, where that information doesn't hold much value by itself. But if you know what person's A, person A's likes and dislikes are, what their preferences are, in terms of overall job design, you can still glean information out of that. Maybe they, maybe you know that they are not a fan of very fast-paced jobs with a lot of button inputs that have a lot of OGCD abilities. And if you know that information, and they are saying, hey, I really do not like this job, I do not think it is redeemable, it has a lot of systemic problems behind it, you may, able to, you may be able to ascertain the reasons for that critique. But if they are able to say, hey, this, this class has too much button bloat, there's way too many OGCDs, the pace is just terrible, it's just not good, it's not fun. Saying it's not good or not fun, yes, that's subjective, it's hyperbole, but you can glean information out of that because they're able to distribute or convey information preceding that, or they can pres or they can come after it. Because they said, hey, I do not like this button bloat, there's too many buttons, there's too many buttons that don't do anything, there's too much speed to it, there's too many OGCD button in inputs, there's no, these buttons me are meaningless. You can glean information out of them and be able to say, hey, they may not like that, person A may not like that, but person B might enjoy that, and because of the way that person A is critiquing that job, they may want to pick that job up because it might line up more with their preferences. So despite the way that critique was coded, despite it was how it was gift wrapped, there was still a that there was still something of value there based upon the context. And a lot of the times I feel context is pivotal. It's very important. But a lot of the times it's not just it's just not catchy. Like it's just not context a lot of the time is not marketable. It really isn't. And saying if I make a YouTube video saying, I'm going to give you the context behind what I like about job design, who the hell cares? Like, genuinely, who cares? But if I make a video saying, hey, this class sucks, Do, don't play this, and you click on the video, and I'm saying, and I'm talking about, hey, this class is absolutely god-awful, who wants to play this freaking fast-paced, button-bloated piece of crap? You can get, you can still glean information out of that, but despite how it was gift wrapped, how it was spiced up, how it was this, how that information was disseminated, you can still glean information, you can still glean the biases that I may have, and you can, and you can use that to interpret what I say ap appropriately as to how it relates to you. Say for instance, I got a new player in my hands. A new player is joining the game. Cool! Great! What do they want to play? What job do they want to focus their time and effort in? Maybe they're a meta-oriented player. And maybe they're like, hey, I'm the story's cool and all, but I mainly want to raid, and I want to raid optimally. I want to get those high-end passes. I want to get those clear times. I just want to raid, and I want to do it at a high level. Okay, they have biases. They may care about a job's performance. That may be a valid concern of theirs. That is fine. People are allowed to have their preferences. They may dis they may not align up with mine, but they're allowed to have their preferences. Now, say I make a video, and I'm not a meta-oriented player, and I make a video on, say, Dragoon. And I say, hey, Dragoon's really fun. I love the flow of it, and I love the jumps behind it. I like how there's an overall flow with the GCDs, but I feel that Life of the Dragon is kind of simplistic, kind of you know, kind of uninspired in a lot of ways, how it just kind of boils down to one GCD and, like, two OGCDs. And I'm like, okay, that player, that new player may be able to glean information about how that class plays, and then they can use that information accordingly. Like, 
hey, this critique didn't really touch upon the overall balance of Dragoon, so I may need to consume another piece of critique. I may need to, uh, I may need to go to alternate sources here. That still has value to it, but being able to say, hey, I, my, my opinions on what I like to play line up with this person, then hey, if I make a critique saying, hey, I really like how this class plays for so-and-so reason, I feel it's very fun, I feel it's better than the other classes in that regard, you can still glean information out of that. Likewise, if I'm negative, you can still glean information out of that and use that information, use my opinions to judge based upon what your preferences are. If I'm a big fan of FPS games, and I'm making a critique about a game and I'm saying, hey, I feel that this game has a lot of good FPS mechanics to it. Despite what I say, you can take my biases and go accordingly and say, hey, I mean, I don't like FPS games, so I'm not going to play this. Or I may not like this aspect of it, so I may go a different route. That's valuable. And I don't feel and I don't think that critique should be just dismissed out of hand because you disagree with it. What I do agree, though, is negativity for the sake of being negative and overall being pessimistic without providing anything of actual substance that I feel does not have as much value. It may have value in terms of being entertaining, and that's fine. Not everything has to be valuable to the overall state of the game. Things can just exist to be entertaining. I'm fine with that. But I'm not going to put a lot of stock into it when, if I'm making a critique. Or if I'm trying to judge how I want to play a game. And that makes sense. There is a fundamental difference between critique and just being negative for the sake of being, ne of being pessimistic. And there's also a difference between being positive and just for the sake of being optimistic. You have to be able to judge what people like, what people dislike, how they disseminate information, and you have to be able to move accordingly. And you have to be able to process that information accordingly, because that is up to the consumer in a lot of regards. But like I said before, critique is not just meant for the developers or the publishers to take that critique and make a better game out of it. Out of it. That can be used very valuably by the consumer, so that they can make their own choices based on that critique. You don't have to just go off of someone's wood. You can use that their wood, use what they like and dislike, and and judge accordingly from there. How you are probably going to interpret something based upon what other people like or dislike. You can use that information at your... It's a tool in your kit to make decisions. So while I feel that a lot of negativity has kind of come up in the community, I'm not entirely sure why it's, it's kind of like come up recently i don't feel that critique should necessarily be dismissed out of hand by the developers or the consumer i don't but you have to be able to differentiate critique differentiate critique that's been dressed up critique that has biases because all critique has biases from just pure raw pessimism because i do not believe pessimism for the sake of pessimism has much if any value i genuinely don't it's one of the things I've been trying to work on with my channel to try and counteract. Because a lot of the times people can be pessimistic about the games industry. And a lot of the times people use that pessimism to allow it to cloud their judgment and to just ignore a lot of the good that's happening. A lot of the good games that are out, that are out there. A lot of the good that is in this scene. But valuable crit criticism can properly inform the, the consumer and can properly be used to better, the, to better someone's gaming experience. So, really, that's what I wanted to say with this video. I'm going to call it there for the day. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the overall state of the Final Fantasy XIV scene. Do you think it's being too negative for the sake of being negative, or do you think there's some valid criticism under there? Let me know. And while you're down there, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe out there, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.